What go on, brethren? Now, so glad you could join me. Today, I've got a Caribbean-inspired dish that takes me right the way back to my childhood. I'm gonna show you how to make the perfect vegan Jamaican patty. I say Jamaican only because that's what people refer to them as, but it's just a Caribbean. Jamaican didn't invent the patty. In fact, I don't think anyone knows who actually did, but I'm gonna show you how to make a Jamaican patty. And the first part is all about the pastry. But let me talk to you very briefly about my history with the, with the Jamaican patty. For that, I have to go right back to my childhood. I'm gonna go back to right to, I think probably the late 70s, maybe right to the early 80s, I was a, a young kid, and it's my birthday. And for my birthday, one of my older brothers, Amos, I'm gonna give a shout out, yes Amos, respect. Amos, my big brother, one of my big brothers, decided he was gonna take me out for a treat. So he took me out for a treat on my birthday to a Caribbean takeaway shop called Alvino's. Anyone from Manchester um, would, uh, back in the day would probably remember that, it's not there anymore. Alvino sold all kind of Caribbean food, and in particular, he sold patties. And it's, this was the first time I can remember tasting a proper, authentic Jamaican patty. I say Jamaican because he was Jamaican. And he went in there, and, and, and uh, my brother bought me one. It, this was actually, I think it was actually a curry goat patty that, that, he, that he bought me. I remember the, the pastry was yellow and flaky. When I, when I bit into it, it was spicy, a little bit of heat. You can really taste it. Uh, the, um, the goat or the, or the lamb, not quite sure what it was coming through. It was, I mean, that's a memory from nearly 40 years ago. And I remember it clearly. Now, I don't eat meat so much anymore, to be honest with you. Um, so today, I'm going to do a variation of that. I'm going to show you to make a vegan Jamaican patty. Now, uh, with patties, one of the most important things really is the pastry. Yellow, light, a little bit flaky. Lots of different people do their patties in lots of different ways. And in the past, I've done patties using different types of pastry. Today, I'm going to do a variation of a rough puff pastry. I'm going to take, take you through a process how to make a Jamaican patty rough puff pastry. Whoa! Let's get to it. Before we get started, just do me a quick favor. Click that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon so you'll be the first to know whenever I upload a new video. Okay, let me just talk through the ingredients. To begin with, we've got 250 grams of fat. Fat-wise, I'm using a vegetable fat that kind of comes in a solid block. Uh, I'm using 350 grams of flour. For my pastry, I'm using wholemeal flour mixed with some spelt flour. I'm just kind of making it a little bit more healthy, adding a bit more fiber, a bit more, more nutrients. To add to that, I'm going to add a touch of cinnamon, a touch of turmeric, which gives it its lovely color, a little bit, uh, makes it a little bit aromatic as well, and a teaspoonful of salt. All right, let's dive straight into our pastry. So to begin with, inside this glass bowl, I have 350 grams of flour. Now, typically speaking, when making puff pastry, you'd use plain white flour, but to give my patties, uh, although it'll be it a treat, to give my patties a bit more of a nutritional value, I'm mixing wholemeal flour, flour with spelt flour. So I'm just giving that a little bit of mix together. Into that, I'm going to put about half a teaspoonful of cinnamon. Just to give it a little bit of a slight aromatic flavor. Next, I'm gonna put in a teaspoonful of salt. And then finally, I'm going to put in a teaspoonful of turmeric, a very generous teaspoon of turmeric. That gives a little bit more aroma, but it also gives a famous yellow color as well. I'm just gonna give the dry ingredients a bit of a mix. So I've got my dry ingredients mixed together and I'm gonna add the fat. Now this fat is a solid vegetable fat. And to make sure it stays solid and cold, uh, which it needs to be and explain why, I had it actually had it in a freezer. Now the reason why I had it in a freezer instead of the fridge, uh, if you're making this with butter, fridge keeps the butter fairly rock solid by itself. But I think uh, the vegetable oil has a lower melting point, so it would start to melt quicker than the butter would. So in order to keep it fairly solid, I had to go to slightly extra measure measures and keep it in the freezer, because I want it fairly solid. So I've got 250 grams of butter, fairly solid. I'm just gonna put that in to my flour, like that. And now I'm just going to coat 
each one of those individual blocks of butter with the flour. Now I'm gonna use a, a technique which we use for most pastries called the rubbing in method. Now typically speaking, if I was making a shortcut pastry, I'd rub all the fat together into flour until it resembled fine breadcrumbs. I'd make sure there was no lumps. But I wanna do slightly the opposite here because I wanna keep some lumps of fat. You see, with puff pastry, when we have little blocks of fat, what happens is that they stay trapped between the layers of pastry when we fold and wrap it together. And when it bakes, those fat layers, they evaporate and that's what helps leave a little pocket of air. So we actually want, in this occasion, to try and have little pockets of air. So I'm gonna rub it in together, but try and do it kind of rough so I have some blobs of fat actually left over. So I'm just gonna squeeze together, quite rough, but I definitely wanna see blobs of fat at the end. Grab, squeeze into the flour. Grab and squeeze. Grab and squeeze. Now with this particular recipe as well, I'm using a slightly less fat per flour than you'd get in a typical um, puff pastry recipe. Typically speaking, puff pastry is equal fat to flour. Now I've got just over maybe two thirds fat to flour, so it's a little bit healthier because it's got less fat in it. And uh, typical Jamaican uh, puff pastry, well in my opinion, as I remember it, it's not quite flaky flaky like full flaky pastry. It's got a bit more body to it than that. It's, it's more tallow, if to use a, a more Jamaican expression. It's a little bit tougher, it's a little bit, a little bit more to it than a typical puff pastry. So I don't want quite as high a fat to flour ratio. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just squeezing it through, but I'm not going to make it as fine as a breadcrumb. So when we're finished doing this, you should still see some blocks or some parts of butter mixed in. And we're back. So I've integrated it, but hopefully when you look through, it's harder to see now because more of the yellow turmeric's coming out. You'll still see there's still some blocks, uh, some slightly unintegrated blocks of butter. A little bit harder to see because again, the turmeric's yellow, but I've not um, use the rubbing technique to the extent whereby the mixture looks like breadcrumbs. It's still a little bit lumpy and that's what I want. Now into this, I'm going to add about 100 mils of ice cold water. Now to make sure my water is ice cold, I've actually got some ice cubes in there. Now, I want it really cold because I don't really want the fat to melt. If I was using butter, it would just need to be cold water because the butter takes uh, takes a higher temperature for it to, to start to melt. But this vegetable fat, although it comes in a block, it seems to melt at a much higher point. And I want to make sure I maintain little pockets of fat. Uh, so when I'm rolling it on, it's baking ultimately, uh, as they disappear, they help create the layering effect. So I'm going to add in about 100 mils of water, uh, just enough water really to combine it into a dough. So here it goes. All right, using my knife, start to bring it all together. Right, it's coming together. And there we have our dough. If it's a little bit too wet, and this looks a little bit too wet for me, just add a touch of flour. This is some remainder of my salt flour. A little bit of flour to compensate for the extra liquid and we're good to go. So the next stage now is the rolling out stage and that's a very important stage in creating the essential layers for our rough puff pastry. Just before we get onto the rolling stage, I'm just going to cover it with cling film and stick it in the fridge for about 20 minutes. So here's our pastry fresh from the fridge. It's cool, but it's not rock solid. Before we get started with the rolling process, I'm just going to flour the work surface. Next, I'm basically going to roll out the pastry until it's about the thickness of a table knife handle. Size-wise, my aim is to roll the pastry out so it is roughly three times as long 
as it is wide. Then you fold the top part down by about a third and the bottom part up. Once you've done that, just rotate your pastry and then roll it back out until the length is three times the width and you repeat the process. It's these folds and flattening that helps create the flaky layers. If we repeat that process three times, then you have nine separate layers. As many times as you repeat the process, you create more and more layers. I'm gonna rotate this process and repeat about four times. So now our pastry is done, we're just going to pop it back in the fridge while we work on our filling. Now, when it comes to filling, you really can do pretty much whatever you want. And to be perfectly honest with you, whenever I'm making patties, it's never the same thing twice because I just make patties and fill them with whatever I happen to have in the house. Sometimes I have just vegetables, so I, so I season and fill them with vegetables. Sometimes I have some, some mints or or some chickpeas or some lentils or whatever I have, I season up and fill them with that. So the inside, what goes inside a patty really is entirely up to you. There are probably as many variations as there are stars in the sky. There's, there is no one original recipe. But this is a recipe that, this is the one I'm gonna share with you. So to make this, I'm going to use some, uh, some Tesco meat-free mints. Now they're all quite very, they're all pretty similar. Uh, Tesco do one, Asda do one, Tesco do one. Um, uh, all the major makes do one, there's a corn type one, there's there's loads of them. You, you'll see like a, a meat free mince, they all taste pretty much the same. It doesn't matter so much how they taste because we're going to add so much seasoning to them, we're going to make the flavour our own anyway. So we're starting off with some uh, vegetarian mince, I've got a vegetable stock cube, <clears throat> I've got some curry powder, I've got a little bit of brown sugar and I've got some soya sauce. There's a new ingredient that I want to try, that I've been, trying to, that I've been looking for an opportunity to try and that's this um, chip sop curry uh, sauce by, by Bisto. So I've been wanting to try that because I, I kind of like that chip shop curry type flavor. I wanted to add that to it. So inside here, I've got some chip shop curry, some of this, and it's already dissolved into that is one vegetable stock cube. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna talk you through how I'm gonna prepare the contents, and then we're gonna bring it all together and make our patties. Into my vegetable oil, I'm going to add the curry powder. I'm going to turn this heat down actually. Right, so turn it down to its lowest setting. Now this stage, sort of toasting off the, the curry powder by itself to begin with helps develop the flavor, but you don't want to overdo it because it will start to burn really easily. So it's on its lower setting. I'm just kind of moving that around, letting a little bit of heat get to it. Okay, straight into my frying pan, I'm going to add uh, my mince. Now you add as much mince as you reckon you're going to make patties. And tonight I'm gonna to put a little bit of soy sauce. Smells good already, to be honest with you. Two ingredients I forgot out, but you, can't, you can never really forget. I've got some onion granules and I've got some garlic. So I'm gonna put a little bit of garlic. A little bit of onion. I'm gonna add a touch more oil. I think our mints are soaked up most of that. business. Little touch of brown sugar and then 
we're going to add in our gravy, our chip shop curry from Bisto. That's the final part we're going to add in. And that just about does it. It's, kind of, it's always important to just taste to make sure that the flavor's as you want it. A little taste. Oh, that's nice. Mm. Need a touch of salt. Oh that's, oh, that's nice. It's got a little kick to it as well. Oh, that is nice. Man, that chip cut shop curry. That's, that's right, that gives a nice little dimension to that. That's a nice addition, that. I might keep that for next time. Okay, on with the assembly, and let's complete our patties. And our pastry is nice and chilled. And ready for action. Okay, so out, it's out of the fridge. If we look closely, we can still see some specks of fat in it, which is just exactly what we want in order to help create the layering effect. So now all I'm gonna do is roll this out to about the thickness that we're after. Again, simple tip, but worthwhile mentioning when you're rolling, you can roll forwards and backwards, but try not to roll over the edge. When you roll over the edge, it really thins out the very edge part, which means that the pastry isn't the same thickness all the way through. So you'll have some parts that are thick, some parts that are a little bit thinner. So it's just a good tip to make sure your pastry stays an even thickness. In terms of how thick you roll your pastry out, about the thickness of a table knife handle. Roughly speaking. Size-wise, entirely up to you. You can make some about this size, or I think for these ones, I'm gonna make some fairly large patties, so my patty is gonna end up being about, about half the size, of the size of the saucer. So just put your plate down, and just draw around. Surprisingly satisfying thing to actually do. So I'm just gonna gather up the pastry that's left over. going to get rolled out for my next batch. Now the thing about making them bigger, it means you can have more filling in them. I mean, when you make them smaller, you end up having a lot, the ratio is a lot more, you end up having a lot more pastry uh, to filling, which is nice. But this time around, I wanted a lot more filling to pastry by way of a ratio. And then, I'm going to fold over nice and neatly and press down. So I'm just pressing them together and once I press them together, use a fork to help press two sides together. Just like that. And then transfer that to the baking tray. Now these are whopper patties, these ones. I don't normally make them quite this big, but I wanted to make some big ones. So it's the same as before. Basically pressing the two halves together with your finger initially and then with the fork. If it sticks sometimes, good idea to just coat in a little bit of flour and that helps you just carry on. Patty number two. So, so far, we've got three large patties and what I'll do with the remainder, I'll make some slightly smaller ones. Now don't be tempted 
with these small ones to overfill because overfilling the smaller ones are easier than you think. You think you've got nothing in them, you think there's not quite enough ingredients and you try and fold them over and then they're bursting out. So just like before, exactly the same method. The fold up, rolled over and try and seal. Again, see this one's almost got too much filling in. So it's bursting almost at the seams. Boom. A little first little tiny one. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this for the rest of them. So I've got some smaller ones and I've got some larger ones. I didn't like this because the larger ones are going to take, going to take a bit more baking, I think, than the smaller ones. So pop them in the oven and see if come back in about half an hour or so. And we are back and we have absolutely perfect looking, nice yellow, beautifully filled patties. So, just by way of an example of the pastry alone, I had one bit of pastry left with no filling, so I just thought I'd bake it, just so you can see, as an example, what the pastry itself looked like. So, if we look inside, you can see the different layers. Now, we've used um, brown flour and svelte flour, which aren't flours typically used for pastry, so it's not as light as it would be if you used white flour, but already, you can see the layers inside that, inside of our pastry, which is exactly what we're looking for. But now, as always, we come to the proof of the pudding, or, in this case, the proof of the patty. So I'm just gonna take one of our patties here, make it closer to the camera so you can see. And now, I do this for you. Let's taste. I can feel childhood just rolling back. Rolling back the years. These are extremely tasty patties. You get a little bit of heat from the, um, the curry powder that we added. Yeah, really nice, that, that chip shop um, curry thing we got from Bisto, quite a nice addition. I think I'll definitely use that again. Our pastry is light and flaky, but it's not too soft because it's it's kind of halfway between a puff pastry and a shortcut pastry. So we needed it to be, I wanted it to be kind of semi strong enough to hold quite a bit of filling. You know, it's broth floppy. Mmm. If you use puff pastry alone, the kind of thing you have around sausage rolls, too flexible to hold this kind of liquid. All this kind of filling, just about perfect. Mm. Absolutely. Delicious. Alvino himself will be proud of patches like this. Once again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Food at 101 is on Facebook. We have like a video page on Facebook we put a whole bunch of videos kind of cool to watch and also on Instagram and we try and post on Instagram really regularly at least a few times a week so kind of follow us there as always my name is Mr. Lionbird you can call me sir a thing we know.